I reorganized the entire stockroom and cleaned this entire cafe for nothing. Tim sent me my check, but I forgot to tell him that I moved and changed my address. I didn't know you moved. You never mentioned it. Well, I've just been so busy working, I just didn't even have time to mention it. I just... Where exactly did you move to? The same neighborhood, uh, just a few streets over. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, like, that, that neighborhood's kind of quiet and stuff for somebody like you, isn't it? What? I like peace and quiet. You <laughs> like peace and quiet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. when I'm home, um... I like it quiet, okay? Probably likes a nice bath, too. Bob Jamison <laughs> is Hi. with uh, nice. Family Guidance. Very good nice to, to you meet you. She is Thank the so barista much. of the mosta or <laughs> something. I tell you, she, she is the right one. So, yeah. Well, here you go. Oh, this is what so. you had ordered. Super yes. Thanks. Thank All you. Yours. Enjoy yourself. Thank nice you. to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with Family Guidance? Now, it took me, like, forever. Okay, I know you guys changed from you. Youth guidance like a millennium ago. Yeah, like but, 11 you know, years ago. Did that, yeah, did that mess you up, Tim? <laughs> yes, it did. It messed up a lot it of people. It messed me up. The God was broadening our horizons and broadening our mission field, and we needed a new name to, to kind of signify the territory God was entrusting to us. So uh, we were able to, to minister to multiple generations at the same time, which made a lot of sense. You know, if you're ministering with at risk kids at any period of time, you begin realizing, you know, somebody had helped mom and dad, you know, 10 years ago. We FunFest is your birthday party capital of the world. Our party packages are so much fun and exciting that we call them FunFestic. Let the expert staff at FunFest create a lifelong memory for that special someone in your life. We offer packages for children, teens, and adults. We also specialize in group events ranging from 20 to 300 people. Book your next birthday party or group event today. Call us at 412-828-1100 or reach us online at www.funfestcenter.com. Did you know that 95% of Christian parents do not send their children to Christian schools? One reason parents often give is that they want their kids to be salt and light. A noble idea, but consider that they have the rest of their lives to be salt and light. What they need now is an education where they can learn, think, and learn how to think in an atmosphere where their worldview is supported, not ignored or run down. Give them that and their light will shine. Visit pittsburghchristianschools.net and step up to Christian education. Remember when paying attention to detail was important to building things that last? At Omega Home Improvements, we believe that your siding deserves that same attention to detail so it too is built to last. We specialize in a foam back insulated panel that features five times the energy efficiency and is four and a half feet longer than other panels used on homes today. We're Omega Home Improvements, doing it right from beginning to end. Check it out. New to You Kids features retail clothing for children. Many of our items can be found in high-end boutiques. We provide quality clothing and excellent service and specialize in dressing your children from head to toe for weddings, graduations, holiday wear, and pageants. We recognize that you want your children to look their very best. Therefore, these clothing lines are unique and fashionable. New to You Kids is located at 2405 Sawmill Run Boulevard, Route 51 in Pittsburgh. With all the money you've been making off these YouTube shows, I bet your place is awesome. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. That is smart. Smart, my friend. Very smart. What? <laughs> Sam's right. Listen, with all the money that you're making, I mean, that neighborhood, you can get a palace. You can probably get some really nice loft with a great view for peanuts. Fantastic idea, bud. Are you I going to have a housewarming party? I, I don't think so. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Even, I'll even bring a gift. It'll be great. We'll bring all kinds of friends, and, and, and we'll have a great party and, and, and bother the neighbors, and it will be fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to do that, guys. Right. Oh, come on. Bob, when, when you are involved with Family Guidance, when you were youth guidance, you were, you, like I said, you were working with kids 
all over trying trying to help them. Exactly. What is family guidance though? Family guidance, we've we've added the extra dimension of being able to do marriage ministry and, and work with the older generation, who who shapes and uh, influences the younger generation. So we really are kind of multiplying our ministry, but we still do a significant amount of ministry with the with the younger generation. And when you say help or work with the older generation, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, together Pittsburgh, for instance, is the state's largest marriage strengthening ministry, and uh, uh, we offer marriage education to kind of help get the, the foundation of the family in, in shape. And we're partnering with 30 different churches around the Pittsburgh area to help them to do uh, marriage ministry. So that'll be everything from uh, like, uh, uh, marriage enrichment to helping couples that are experiencing some struggle, helping engaged couples to kind of get on track from day one, and, and uh, couple to couple mentoring, for example, where an older couple will take a younger couple kind of under their wing and, and uh, mentor them and, and minister to them. And so a lot of different models of ministry that the body of Christ is really embracing and uh, learning how to, to uh, implement very effectively in the church. Now, how long have you been involved? Uh, we've been doing uh, Together Pittsburgh for, for five years now. But I mean, the overall youth guidance, family guidance, uh, how long have you since been Since 1964. So we've been around a long time. And I've been at the, at the ministry since 88. So, I'm yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> What kind of changes? Have you seen changes in how you've had to minister to people? And, and are, are there different trends in the way our culture is going or in families or in marriages? I think there's or? greater and greater recognition within the body of Christ uh, of family and youth as a, as a vital mission field. Probably the most vital mission field facing our generation, Tim. And I, and I love to see God's people stepping up and saying, I want to make an, an impact on that, that um, critical mission field. I love, like, you know, my heroes are our mentors. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's just nothing cooler than knowing that God's using you to have an impact on somebody else. And our, our mentors experience that every day. Uh, so they got, they're working with, uh, working with kids that are very young, very impressionable. Sometimes they've been hurt in life already, even at a very tender age. And for somebody to, to kind of take them under the wing and, and kind of be a spiritual coach, a mentor, a role model, and just a friend, a confidant in their lives means everything to these kids. Where, where do you get these mentors? Where do you, where do you get these people to these help These mentors out? come from churches all over the Pittsburgh area. I mean, they could call up our office and say, hey, you know, I heard about this and I'm very interested in, in maybe God using me to, to have an impact on a one-child-sized mission field. And uh, so these are these are mentors, really salt-of-the-earth people. They love kids and they love Jesus. And, you know, if you, if you love Jesus and love kids and know how to be a friend to a kid, you can be a very powerful mentor in a kid's So life. these aren't like psychologists or, no. or teachers, professional teachers or things like that. These are regular, everyday people that are saying, Saying, I just want to help a kid. Exactly. The, just knowing how to be a friend to a kid is really all, all that you need. Uh, I've, I've had mentors say that they're amazed at the impact that they can have to shape a young life just by being a friend and hanging out. Hangout ministry, you know, when you strip away all the other stuff that that can you know, that get youth ministry can consist of, mm -hmm. just hanging out with a kid uh, is, is the most formative experience that a kid can have. You know, it, it, I think so many people get lost in the idea that they've got to be, you know, some super person to be able to impact someone else's life yeah. and what you're what you're saying is that people just come along. I mean, do you, do you give them the tools to, to, to do what they yeah, need to we do? do? We do an excellent training with the, with the mentors. So they, they have six hours kind of preparation. They kind of know what this mission field looks like. But really, I think the key is just kind of ongoing, keeping in touch with the mentors, encouragement, if a, if a problem pops up, helping them think through what, what they need to do with the kids. Uh, but I think <sighs> Phil is right. You should have a housewarming party. I don't know why you don't want to. Well, is it because you haven't decorated yet? Don't worry. I can help you decorate. I love decorating. I just need to see out the layout first because that determines everything. What? I read all the decorating oh. blogs. I help my brother decorate his room so I can easily help you. How many rooms do you have? Uh, I don't know. I haven't counted them. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter. We can figure that out. I'm so good at bargaining shopping. You know that because you always see me shop, right? Yeah. Okay. I know. I know. Oh, look. Something over there. Oh. Okay. Why are you looking at me that way? I know where you moved. Why don't you tell your friends when they ask? Well, I mean, I mean, I tell them stuff. I mean, I just, you know, I just haven't really told them right now. I mean, you don't miss anything, do you? And they just don't let me get a moment to say anything in there, so. That's true, they do talk a lot. Yeah, they do, you know, it's just crazy, so. But I moved, you know, big deal. People move all the time, right? Right, I'm proud of you, Marcus. You made the right move. Oh, thanks, I, I believe I did too. No, well, thanks, Ms. Riley. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad you feel the same way about that. It means a lot to me. You know what would be a, another right move? Let me guess. Let me move to the counter and get you a fresh cup of coffee. Take this. Thank you. We hear so much about the bad things 
that are going on. And when you when you hear good things like this, it's it's very encouraging to hear that you know there are lives that are being changed, and people, everyday people, can make a difference. Yeah. God wants us to be uh, salt and light, and you know have influence in in the world that He's called us to be a part of. And uh, and our mentors are having a chance to do exactly that. And it's a very non-threatening kind of ministry. You know, mm-hmm. it takes some training, and and you have to be prepared for some things that might that always can pop up with kids, mm-hmm. pop up with my daughter, and you know mm-hmm. with your kids too. That's that's kind of you know part of the part of the mission field. But uh, what's funny, you're, you're talking about mentoring. One of my personal mentors yeah. is. Uh, Dr. Jay Passavant, ah, and, and he was Wonderful telling me that he's involved in you with a, a kind of mentoring program, this, this LAMP. Northway Christian Community has really stepped up and, and uh, uh, taken on a very important, very exciting, kind of a, a unique ministry. They're, they're doing some ministry in the east end of the city. And these are mostly North Hills suburban folk and who, who have a great love for Jesus, and they're making an investment in our city in, in some neighborhoods where, where kids, uh, you know, 87, neighborhood. 87% of the kids don't have a mom and a dad, and a lot of the kids don't have either. They're being raised by an aunt. Uh, some of the kids, frankly, are pretty much homeless, and, uh, and, uh, and our friends at Northway are just kind of pouring their lives into these kids and giving them hope and a future in Jesus Christ. Uh, really cool. You're involved in so many different things. It's not only not only the kids, but once again, you're dealing with adults, you're dealing with parents, you're helping marriages come together. You're doing, I mean, you got your fingers in everything regarding the family. Well, that's a lot of fun. Uh, how, I, I heard somewhere along the line about uh, Henry Blackaby and some conference, and that your fingers are involved in that too. Uh, we're helping to sponsor uh, the uh, leadership, spiritual leadership conference, and, and this is a great opportunity for the body of Christ in Pittsburgh. Uh, Henry Blackaby, you, you probably know, he wrote a mm-hmm. classic oh, book, Experiencing yeah, yeah. God. I mean, I, God. I will probably great be re- rereading that book for the rest of my life, Tim. Yeah. You know, and he was the chairman of the, the National Day of Prayer a couple mm-hmm. years ago, and uh, he's in his 70s now. And I don't know how many opportunities Pittsburgh is going to have that you know to be exposed to uh, a wonderful man of God like Henry. Blackaby. I've had a chance to kind of hang out with him, and I've learned so much from him. So I'm looking forward to him coming back uh, later in, in, in April to, uh, to come and be a, uh, just a, a light post for the kingdom here in Pittsburgh. It's a, what I like about it is it's a spiritual leadership conference. Uh, that everybody who that God's using in some way to have an impact on somebody else mm-hmm. is a leader, whether they think of themselves right. that way or not. I mean, it's not just pastors, not just CEOs of corporations, although those are clearly leaders, but like parents are leaders. Uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, any Anybody who's helping to get somebody else onto God's agenda is a leader. And so this conference is, is, is uh, kind of aimed at helping God's people to be a powerful influence wherever they are. It's very cool. That I, I know he does these conferences all over the United States. and that, all that over it the just, world. It just, yeah, literally all over yeah. the world. And, and I'm glad that it's coming here to the Pittsburgh area and, and wherever it goes. I mean, his, that book, uh, Experiencing God, awesome is stuff. just a powerful powerful thing and, and it, it ties in with family guidance because you guys are wanting to, to build up people to, to exactly. help them to mentor others and impact others exactly lives. to be an influence for for christ's kingdom here in the, the city of pittsburgh so uh we're happy to, to be one of the sponsors of uh, the conference coming up so uh he's a great kingdom resource and a great guy and a great opportunity his place his place you know that your morning cup of coffee can help clothe, feed, rescue, and care for the poorest of the poor? I know it may seem hard to believe, but it can happen. His Place and Kiva Han Coffee have joined forces to bring a special blend of coffee that will change the world. Hope Coffee is a direct trade coffee, which means that the families of the people who work hard on the coffee farms receive the funds directly from their harvest. In addition, the profits from Hope Coffee go to help rescue children in impoverished countries and bring the message of God's love to people all around the world. For a limited time, for your gift of $37, we'll send you as our thank you a His Place mug and a 12-ounce bag of Hope Coffee. Together, we're changing the world one life at a time through one cup of coffee at a time. Send your gift today. My dream is to be a lawyer. My dream is to be a veterinarian. I want to be a chef because I love food. (laughs) My dream is to be a doctor, a teacher. My dream is to be a ballerina, a fireman, an emergency room physician, football player, science teacher. My dream is to become a mechanical engineer. 
professional skateboarder. My dream is to be a nurse. A shoe designer. The president of the United States of America. I have big dreams. But right now? I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. Hey, I'm just a kid. I'm a kid. Just a kid. I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid, ready to be adopted. Ready to be adopted. I'm just a kid, ready to be adopted. For the facts about adopting a child from foster care, contact the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. <coughs> Did you hear that Marcus just got a new place in his old neighborhood? It is so exciting. It is a big, fancy loft. Oh, I can't wait. Phil says it's um, really fancy and that he's going to throw him a housewarming party as soon as I finish decorating for Marcus. Oh, I can't wait because decorating and shopping are like my favorite thing ever. You know Marcus has a roommate. No, he has a roommate? Yes, he does. That's strange. He never mentioned me had a roommate. I'm going to have to go ask him. You should do that. I'm going to. Oh, it's glad to have you back, man. Great to be back. Glad to see you. Michelle! Are, are, are you doing like a pre-Focus 4 interview? interview? Yes, then, yes. Okay, well, I'll let you go. If there's anything I can get for you, just give a yell, Great. okay? Thanks, Tim. So Darnell, how does it feel you just come off a Super Bowl win last year when you played for the Saints? And not only are, did you do that, but you also are a commentator and a speaker and you have your own foundation. So you have to tell me a little bit about that foundation. Well, I feel like I am a you know, guy, you know, running a, like an octopus with all these different you know, arms, <laughs> doing so many different things. Uh, football was obviously great. I had a you know, great career. Um, God blessed me, you know, getting through a lot of things and obstacles. And a lot of things that I went through, made me want to you know, do things you know, after football, mm -hmm. which was dealing with youth and families. So my foundation, Melons to Manhood, we're holding a couple of events coming up. The first is going to be after the pit, reverse pit um, blue goal game okay. at, at Heinz Field. You know, the football team goes out and they play a game. Then we're having the dessert tasting for a cause at um, Saks Fifth Avenue okay. on um, April 16th. And, and pretty much what we're going to do, my, my foundation, Melons to Manhood, um, Cox MVP's foundation, and Chris Wilson's foundation, having dessert tasting. You can come down there and shop. It's a really nice event, really good event. You meet current and present, present and past um, pit players. So it's okay. going to be a really nice event. So what's, what's really the goal of the event? What do you want to see come out of these two events? Well, the goal of the event is obviously, you know, a fundraising event for each, everybody's foundation. So you can do more things like having health care awareness okay. and programs, um, food drives, mm -hmm. toy drives. It's all about giving back and empowering families through education and their athletics. Now, what made you start this organization you have, the foundation? With me, it was it, growing up as a youth. You know, I grew up in the inner city of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of issues, a lot of struggles, and, and you really don't have anybody to, to motivate you through them things. Mm -hmm. I think it's good when you can get back firsthand, not just deal with the kid, but deal with the adults as well. Exactly. You know, we our families are struggling because they're broken from the head of the household, mostly the father, then down to the mom, and then the children. So you can't just say, okay, I'm going to deal with the kid and then put them back into a bad environment. Exactly. I try to deal with the whole family. So benefits like this, the dessert tasting for a cause, mm -hmm. not only empowers the kids, but the whole family come out and it benefits all the charities so we can then do more with families. And speaking about the kids, is that what influenced you to have your foundation? That was your heart? Absolutely. From my children, I have three kids. I love them to death. Mm -hmm. And just being able, a, a, a guy should be the person who provides for the family, exactly. who shows, who leads the way for the next generation. I think not enough guys who have done positive things in the community come back to say, you know what, here's my, for, here's my formula for success. And I'm going to teach it to you through these type of events. And you're right, because we don't see that a lot in the community, the men standing up, but your organization is really going to help do that. Thank you. So what, what are your future plans for the foundation? What do you want to see? I, can, I want to continue to do things with the family. I want to continue to do things with um, health care. We're going to have a health and wellness benefit June okay. 5th, and that's going to be promoting health care and doing things with keep, keep, keep uh, teaching people about, you know, the, the um, hypertension and diabetes, mm. all these different avenues to help you about health care. Yeah, so because that's key. That is very key. So. Especially in the black community, that's key because we do face a lot of issues and things that we need to be aware of, and you're making people aware of that. Have you have you had a good response to your foundation? Absolutely. How does the community feel about it? There, that's the important one. Well, the community's been supporting it, and everybody can go to darnelldinkins.com to okay. find out more about the events. But 
it's you see so many more people dying from heart attacks at 30, 40 years old You're that right. we think because on the outside we look okay, mm -hmm. the inside of uh, we're all jacked up on the inside. So just having a, a way between you know high mark giving free health screenings, it's a great mm -hmm. way to come down for a day and have an event where people can learn totally about themselves on the inside mm -hmm. as well as the outside. Tell us a little bit about your speaking so engagement. Riley says you have a roommate. A roommate. Nothing gets by that old man. Who is it? Do I know them? Is she on YouTube? How old? What do they look like? Where'd you meet you them? YouTube! Come on, come on, come on. Nebby! Uh, wait, Nebby? What are you talking about, Nebby? I Tell us who it is! No, 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 I have to take this. It's my roommate. Hi. No, no, you never bother me. It's, it's okay. No, no, well, I'll be home about 15 minutes. Okay. No, 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 you don't, you don't have to wait up for me. No, you don't have to wait. Right. Doesn't look too good for you. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, it's obvious that Marcus has moved in with a girl. No. Who? You know. No. Who? You know. No, I don't. Who? <laughs> uh, he doesn't even have a girlfriend. You're right. He has a roommate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore with a girlfriend. <laughs> what do you mean, not anymore? I was never his girlfriend. Oh, well, apparently not. <laughs> now he has a roommate. Come on. <laughs> I just, I don't, I just want to know who it is. He won't even tell us. Oh, it could be anybody. I mean, for instance, well, I mean, it could be one of your, one of your friends. They do like him, but I mean, no, they would have told me. Really? Maybe not. <laughs> Poor girl. Oh no. <laughs> you, I mean, not. Hey, that's right. hey, look. What's, what's up here? I, am, I, I, am I hearing them right? What? Uh, it sounds like you moved in with your girlfriend? Oh, no, I don't even have a girlfriend. I moved in with my grandmother. Okay, yeah. you moved in with your grandmother. What, why are you being so secretive? And why, why do Phil and Sam think you're moving in with some girl? No, I'm not being secretive. They just keep jumping to the conclusions. They don't even give me opportunity to get a word in. No, it's, it's you know, Phil wants to throw me a housewarming party. Sam wants to decorate my entire house. What do you think, I made of money? I mean, I got a fancy crib? <laughs> don't say that. They'll think, they'll think you're having a baby. Oh, God, no. It's, <laughs> uh, they're all over the place. It's ridiculous. Uh, well, look, the, the truth is, 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 is my grandmother was going to get moved out, yeah. and I didn't want that to happen. So basically, uh, she's on a fixed income. She's forgetting little yeah. things here and there. So I couldn't just pay someone to take care of her and just throw her away like that. So, you know, when I was growing up, my dad was never there for me. Uh -huh. You know, my mom, she was always busy all the time, so my grandma took care of me. So now it's my opportunity to take care of her. So I want to do it. I can do it. And uh, I'll her everything. You know, I want to do this for her. So I don't know what I'd... What I'd what would happen to me if I ever lost her? You know what, I'm really proud of you. I, I mean, I, I'm sure that she wouldn't know what she would do without you either. Listen, if you, you know, you need any help with anything, all I gotta do is just ask, okay? I'll, I'll be there. And I appreciate I'm, I'm, I'm that. I'm proud of you, man. That's, that's a good thing. You shouldn't be ashamed that. of that. So now, far, so good. Earlier, we were talking about some events that you have coming up. Where can people purchase tickets at for the dessert? Tasting is it at it's at DessertTasting.com? Is that the right place? The, they can go right. right there to the DessertTasting.com. It's okay. like a tongue twister right there, and they can <laughs> you know, know. find out about the event, purchase tickets, and come out meet guys like myself, Chris Dolman, who's a great you know pit football pit player, okay. um, Hank, um, Frank Gustine, Bill Hargrove. Okay. So many people are going to be there. It's going to be a great event. Women can come there and shop, get those desserts, and then it's all encompassing event. Now I have a sweet tooth, Darnell. I love sweets, so I know the ladies out there are going to want to know what kind of desserts are you going to be serving everything everything, everything? you can think of okay mostly chocolate <laughs> <laughs> let's get a little bit back to your foundation though why do you think it's so important well why do you think it's hard for men in the community to take a leadership role in the household why is why do you think that's an issue well i think you know biblically speaking you know if you cut off the head then the body can't bottle and, the, and there's no head of households in, mm -hmm. in the in the african-american community mm -hmm. solely so the, the father's you know not around i myself dealt with my father not really being there so my grandmother mom had opposed so many different things so in a community where young guys are getting an image of what a father is to be through what they see on television, like myself watching, you know, the Cosby show and totally getting it wrong. Um, I think it's vital for guys, like I said, who are 
positive in, in, in public, not being a public success and a private failure, but constantly showing kids how you do it as a man, how you deal with adversity. And that's the whole sole purpose of why I started M2M or Maleness to Manhood. Tre teaching young guys is not just about being tough, because I am a tough guy. Yeah. And I play football, I could wrestle with the best of guys, but being tough mentally and being tough as a father and being there to support your kids is one thing that you can raise them up in a way to keep them going for generations. You know, Darnell, it's interesting you said that you didn't have that father role in your life. How were you able to grow up and become the man you are today? Did you have mentors or certain influences? Because you were in the NFL, so that took a lot of things for somebody to have to know to be a man. I think from seeing my grandmother and my mother's work ethic, it really made me say that, you know, I don't want to be a guy like everybody else. I don't want to, you know, do these negative things. I want to take this road left travel, road less travel to get to where I want to be at. And if I can take this road and learn some positive things about myself, because adversity doesn't come in our life to crush us. It totally comes in our life to build as a stepping stone to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And all the adversity that I've, you know, overcome is just a way that I can continue to go back into young guys and saying, even though you're not where you want to be at right now, mm -hmm. maybe you're in a bad neighborhood, bad house situation, you don't have to be a product of that environment. You can overcome that. But it starts with you being a man and stepping up to the challenges that's faced. Do you have any future projects that you want to present to the community or is M2M your main focus right now? Well, my main thing is continue to do motivational speakings, mm -hmm. continue to do events, and mostly just being able to get in front of kids because being able for kids to be able to go hand in hand, socialize with people who they see as successful mm -hmm. and doing positive things in the community, I think is the most vital thing that I could do is be a voice and say, you know what, there was times where I questioned myself. There were times when I doubted myself, mm -hmm. but like Peter walking on water as he's walking to Jesus, you have to be able to not have fear, not have doubt, not look at your circumstances around you if you don't want to sink. You got to keep your, your faith and your focus on God. And, and you know, that's the key is, is faith. And that's where I wanted to get to next. How were you able to keep your faith intact being a part of the NFL, I'm sure that was difficult for you to do. Yeah, I'm surprised that a lot of guys in the NFL doubt theirself solely on how they play. These guys have been first round draft picks. Mm -hmm. I was a free agent and lasted a lot longer. The average playing career is 2.3 years. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith. You have to have that David type faith that mm -hmm. even though I'm going against this Goliath, the first I never played tight end ever until I got to the pros. The first guy I had to line up against was Michael Strahan. So wow. you talk about the whole David and Goliath situation. <laughs> that was but you gotta definitely have, comparable. Exactly, exactly. So you have to really you know, have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's important. Well, it's really good that you're doing what you're doing in the community. Thank you. And yeah, the lights are on. The door is open. The coffee's strong. That's hisplace.tv for more information. If you want to know about maleness to manhood or if you want to know about family guidance and Bob Jamison. Hey, uh, big shout out to Bob and Jamison for spending all the time. It took us extra long to do the show. We're grateful for that. These are some of the wonderful kids that have come in. They made a reservation like you can uh, by going to hisplace.tv. Uh, we hope that you'll tune into the very next program. We've got another great show for you. But if you want to find out, once again, more about anything that takes place on the show, go to hisplace.tv.